at its very heart, event-driven architectures are really quite simple. Something happened, and now we want to do something about it. That's it. That's what being event-driven is all about. But okay, in software terms, we need an event publisher whose job is to send an event somewhere, so an event consumer can pick it up and、uh, do something about it. The simplicity of this basic pattern is what allows you to build really interesting and、uh, sophisticated architectures. By repeating this pattern and combining it in different ways, you can have multiple consumers for the same event. Each would do a different thing, and they're decoupled from each other and can scale and fail independently. And the event publisher doesn't need to know who these consumers are either. Its job is to let the world know that something happened. That's it. And the event consumers can also act as event publishers as well. And in the course of processing an event. They can make state changes in the system that others might be interested in knowing about, so it can publish its own event, which other event consumers can subscribe to. But what do we use to capture and distribute all these events that are the lifeblood of our event-driven architecture? Within AWS, there are lots of messaging services that can ingest and distribute events. Here are six that comes to mind that you would consider as serverless. There are also other serverful alternatives such as Manager Kafka or Amazon Active MQ, but the de facto event bus solution in AWS is EventBridge, and is often found at the center of an event-driven architecture that connects many loosely coupled services. Each are publishing events from its domain and reacting to events happening elsewhere in the system. And with each of these services, they might be event-driven architectures themselves, and they might choose different messaging services depending on their specific needs. And again, if we just focus on EventBridge, it has a huge number of features beyond simply ingesting and distributing events, things like. Event archiving and the replays, as well as schema registry and the discovery, these are all essential for large organizations that wish to adopt an event-driven approach to building software systems. Right now, probably the only thing that is missing from EventBridge is support for first-in, first-out, or FIFO. So, if you need it, you will have to implement it within your application layer or use EventBridge in conjunction with other messaging services. That does support FIFO, such as SNS FIFO and SQS FIFO. And that brings us to the first challenge with testing event-driven architectures: that with all the different messaging services available to us, there are a lot of different variables to consider, because each service has its caveats. And as you've seen in the previous chapters, we often have to adapt our testing strategy around the services we want to use. And take their constraints into consideration. And another thing that makes event-driven architectures difficult to test is the fact that everything is asynchronous. When we do something in reaction to an event, that is asynchronous. So, as a test and an observer, how do I know when that something has been done? I can wait, but how long should I wait before I'm sure that it has failed? And this asynchronous nature of event-driven architectures makes them much more difficult to test compared to request-response communications. Oh, and、uh, when we are testing an event publisher, how can we verify that it has sent the right event with the right data payload? Because most of these messaging services don't have a query API that we can just ask EventBridge or SNS for all the events that has been published in the last five seconds. So it's hard for us to get that feedback loop into our test to verify if the event publisher has done the right thing. And since events might be consumed by many event consumers, but we are only interested in testing one of the consumers, so the next challenge is how do we stop the other event consumers from getting triggered when we run our test? This can often cause noise in those shared environments. Imagine if you publish a malformed or invalid event to test how your consumer handles bad data, but then that triggers other consumers and causes them to error. 
which then triggers alerts and people have to waste their time to investigate these alerts. So how can we isolate the system under test so when we run our tests, it's not going to create any unwanted side effects? And say you're using Lambda functions to process events from EventBridge, but what if you messed up the permissions so EventBridge is not able to deliver the events to your function? There is built-in retries for these delivery failures, and there are CloudWatch metrics you can watch out for and be alerted when they happen. But nowadays, you also have the DeletaQ support as well, so that you won't lose data even if you're not able to rectify the problem in time. Maybe you forgot to set up the alert, so you didn't know about the problem was happening, that event weren't being delivered to your function. But then how do you test these failure paths and whether or not the deleted queue is working? I mean, you could just easily mess up the permissions on the deleted queue as well, so that EventBridge is not able to send the failed event to the deleted queue. There is another metric you can use to monitor that and alert yourself accordingly, but that's another thing you have to know and remember to do, otherwise you can suffer a data loss. And since EventBridge supports a large number of targets, including being able to send messages to SNS topics and SQS queues directly, without needing to run any custom code in Lambda functions or containers, it also means that, once again, we have to think about how we're going to test these direct service integrations. And so there's quite a few interesting challenges we have to think about. But even with all that, we're still just talking about the challenges at the micro level, inside the boundary of a single service, within our broader system. And when we look at things at the macro level, there are also other challenges we have to think about when it comes to testing. A common challenge would be, how do we make sure that event publishers don't make breaking changes to the event schema, which would cause problems with their consumers? And how can we use tests to catch these breaking changes early before they get rolled out to production and the cause an outage? So that's lots of things to cover in this chapter, and I'll do my best to help answer these questions and present you with some options to tackle them. But a word of warning though, this is still very much an evolving space and the tooling and best practices are still catching up. And there are a lot of smart people working on solutions for these problems. So in the meantime, expect some rough edges. But hopefully, I'll give you enough to craft a workable solution that you can apply in your event-driven architecture. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this preview lesson from my latest course, Testing Serverless Architectures where I'll teach you everything I know about testing, including dedicated chapters on each type of popular architecture and demonstrate how to efficiently test them and overcome the challenges that are specific to each architectural style and service. Along the way, you will learn so much, including how to think and strategize about your approach to testing, what are the different types of tests you need, and when you should use which and the why and the how to use ephemeral environments to make testing and the collaboration so much easier. How to debug failing end-to-end -end tests and the why they are important signal that you shouldn't ignore. And we'll talk about the challenges of testing event-driven architectures and some really helpful tips and tricks that's gonna make testing so much easier even in a complex environment with lots of different event publishers and consumers. And we'll touch on testing in production, what it means, and the popular practices such as smoke testing, feature toggling, and of course, chaos engineering. You will have access to all the lectures as well as to the exclusive member-only projects so that you can try these ideas out for yourself. And you can also get 15% off with the code on the screen right now. So hope to see you there. Until then, bye for now.